listen, if you've ever combed the internet for silly little scary games such as Cat Scratch and Bloody Mary, I hope you don't come across the elevator game and attempt to play. Ever since I was a child, I had always been fixated with elevators. They were a fun contraption to jump around in, and I always was excited to take a ride in one of these mysterious stainless steel contraptions. But a couple days ago, my friends and I were combing the internet and came across a website that detailed a new game called The Elevator Game. Immediately, my interest was piqued, and I began to read further as my friends became more enthralled, considering I have told my friends about my fascination with elevators. Our dark dorm room was illuminated by the bright monitor's brilliant display. The elevator game? That's probably some crappy Snapchat challenge that some middle schoolers came up with. My friend Arthur was always a skeptic, but I understand, considering most of these challenges were dribble anyway. Well, you know, I've always been fascinated by elevators, I retorted. Maybe this challenge may have some merit to it. Well, hurry up and see the rules. I want to see what you have to do, and if we can do it tonight. What else do you think we're going to do tonight? Drink and play Smash? I want to do something new for once. The other voice came from the blue bean bag on the other side of the room. Of course, Mike would be asleep on a Friday night. Well, nice of you to join us, Mike. Pull up a chair and we'll see the rules together, I said. After he groggily moved his beanbag toward my desk to my left, I began to scroll down and see the rules of this game. The display listed the rules as follows. 1. Enter the elevator of your choice. Alone. Alone? We can't do this challenge together, Mike said, yawning. I looked at him. I guess we'll just have to take turns then. I'm down. I'm sure this is a load of horse crap anyway. Fucking buzzkill, Mike muttered. Once inside, ensure that the elevator is equipped with more than 13 floors. Ooh, 13, so scary, Arthur said, waving his arms like Dracula. Shut up, I quickly snapped. Three, after following two, press the button for the seventh floor. Four, after three, Press the button for the fourth floor. Five. After four, press the button for the eighth floor. This went on for a while. A code that equaled to 74825169. Whatever that meant. But once I got to the ninth instruction, my blood ran cold. Nine. When the woman enters the elevator, do not talk to her. A woman? The fuck? Mike was audibly unnerved, and his anxiety was quickly spreading to Arthur and me. It's just trying to be scary, but I gotta say, I'm intrigued. If this got Arthur's attention, then this challenge might be pretty damn interesting. 10. Once the doors open, you have entered the outer world. Oh shit, that was all Mike had let out. We were all silent for about 30 seconds, then Arthur spoke. Let's do it. There's the Marriott down the street. Things got like 30 floors. Isn't it like fucking midnight? You sure you want to go? We all got class in like two days. I was pretty freaked out, and I was just trying to get out of this situation. My mind began to wander as I thought about the other world. And the woman? What the hell was this? Wasn't this just some kind of joke? It has to be. There can't be another world that's only accessible through a fucking elevator. Right? We arrived at the Marriott, which is the chain hotel that happens to have one in my town. It was a towering building that pierced the thick nighttime clouds. Of course, it has to look as scary as possible, but I pressed on with Arthur and Mike. As we entered through the carousel in the lobby, I immediately had that gut feeling that something was not right. The lobby didn't have a soul in it, save for us. The TV was playing some movie, but the concierge was nowhere to be found, probably in the back, taking a break. Okay, 
Let's go to the side elevators, because we might actually get in trouble for doing this, Arthur rationalized. We agreed and walked to the side where the guests are able to access the hotel. The hotel was completely silent, other than the soft hum of a vending machine. We combed the hallway until we found a lone stainless steel elevator. It was pretty nice, considering in every horror movie the elevator is usually a decrepit, out of order hunk of junk. So who's going in first, I asked. You. You're the one that even found this elevator shit in the first place, Mike said. He had a point. I was the elevator enthusiast. I should go first. I walked up to the button and pressed it, illuminating the little upwards arrow that was plastered across it. The elevator beeped like it was waiting for me. I walked in. See you in hell, guys. I remarked to the guys as they nervously waved me goodbye. As I enter, I see 35 buttons. Perfect. Step one complete. I reach into my pocket and grab the paper that I wrote the code on. I inputted 7, 4, 8, 2, 5, 1, 6, 8. At the final button press, the elevator began to move. My heart began to race because it was working. The elevator rang and the display read 6. It stopped and the doors opened. My heart dropped because what I saw before me was a woman. She was dressed in pure white with a red hat that only accentuated the brilliance of her outfit. I couldn't see her face due to the veil around her face that almost seemed opaque. Her hair was jet black which was a contrast to her white outfit. She slowly walked in, the only sound being the clacking of her heels as she entered. I was about to say hello out of instinct, but my mind flashed back to the rules of the game. 9. When the woman enters the elevator, do not talk to her. My blood ran cold, and I looked away from her. Hey. Her voice was as smooth as silk. Excuse me. I need your help. It was getting increasingly difficult to look away from her, and the fear I felt inside was damn near unbearable. Please, at least say something. I looked at her and didn't say a word. Help me, she said. The elevator stopped. The display read 8. That meant that the ride was complete and I quickly exited the doors as they opened. It was just another hallway, same as all the others inside the Marriott. What other world was the challenge talking about? As I looked back at the elevator, I saw the woman remove her veil, and I couldn't fathom what I saw. She didn't have eyes. Not like her eyes were caved out or anything like that, but that there was just skin where her eyes should be. I was paralyzed in fear as I saw the elevator doors close, and I remembered the last instruction. Once the doors open, you have entered the other world. I began to walk through the hallway, wondering what was so different about this new world that I have walked upon. As I walked through the empty hallway, I had a realization that stopped me dead in my tracks. I didn't have a way back. I sprinted back to the elevator and frantically clicked on the button to go back down. The doors opened and I got increasingly woozy. The nausea was becoming unbearable as I wasn't able to move. The doors opened and I dragged myself in increasingly weaker. I pressed the first floor button and collapsed on the floor. The elevator opened and I crawled out into the lobby. Mike and Arthur were there waiting for me. Hey, where have you been? It's been like two hours, Mike said, but it didn't sound like him. You okay, Mike? You don't sound yourself. I'm good. His normally baritone voice sounded and the pitch shifted up, and it had an uncanny sound I couldn't shake. The streets were completely empty as we drove back, and almost no lights were on save the street lights. It was pitch black outside, and we drove in silence. As we arrived to the dorm, I couldn't shake the feeling that I didn't belong here. 
I wasn't in my own world. I'm not sure what to do because there were no instructions to escape the other world. How could I be so stupid? I knew this would be a good time to call for help. Arthur and Mike have not been the same since I came back from the elevator. If anyone can help me with my own predicament, please. I want to return to my own world, and I feel like my innards are being torn apart. I don't feel real. I don't belong. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button and hit the bell beside it and select the box. That way you'll be notified for any new videos. Also be sure to check out other documentaries and lists on our channel if you're looking for some more horror. Rodent horror.